What's up, YouTube? It's me, the Capybara, Twitch streamer extraordinaire. And you know, 2022 is dead and gone. We're living in the future now, 2023. And it got me thinking about New Year's resolutions and goals and things. And it's been over a year now of, of me streaming on Twitch and trying to do some content creation for you all. Um, I started making videos a long time ago um and then i fell off and then you know streamed some melee and stuff at, in college but now for a whole year i have tried to grow my own personal the capybara brand and so i decided you know what let's go ahead and just share six things that um i learned over the past year because maybe you won't have to if you're starting out in 2023 this would be my advice to you um to try and grow your brand as quick as possible you know i didn't grow everything it, it, i made mistakes this year i made mistakes um but there are some things that i didn't make mistakes on and overall i just want to share this all with you so let's let's just go ahead and jump into it the first thing that i would do would be to drum roll please i would go ahead and uh accept affiliate as soon as possible now people like devin nash and other people are going to tell you different things if you're trying to grow on twitch go ahead and accept affiliate uh, because that will give you emote slots that'll give you channel points that'll give you uh, monetization the ability to run ads um, things like that uh, to help grow your channel. Now, like emotes and especially channel point redeems are excellent ways to interact with your viewer. And so I would accept affiliate as soon as possible if you're trying to grow as a Twitch streamer. Um, now, some people will say, oh, you should just multi-stream, multi-stream on YouTube. Uh, well, now you can multi-stream on TikTok and like instagram live things like that and so if you're trying to if you're going to really multi-stream i just multi-stream on tiktok and twitch and it won't break your tos then maybe make youtube content separately like what i'm doing right now so in my opinion you should accept affiliate as soon as possible um another argument against accepting affiliate is all the ads that will be run on your channel oh people don't like ads they'll they'll click away well you know what you are doing a service for free and you deserve to get paid so ads are how you do that um uh, besides it's like a, a non-crowd funded source of income for you it's the only one that twitch gives you um also if your end goal is partner here's why i run ads at, at the rate that i do i run ads at the um twitch recommended rate and the reason i do it is because I think that once I get to start applying for partner, I'll be like, my community is already used to these ads and um, I'll continue to run them at the Twitch recommended rate um, for the most money for not only Twitch, but also for you. Um, and it's even not that many ads. It's still way less than TV. I think that the culture of ads around Twitch is funny. Um, now I am coming late into the game at Twitch. But I do think it's odd how butthurt people get over ads. But mm, I don't know. Maybe that's me. Second thing that I learned is to just jump in to the Twitch culture and meet people. Now, here's what I mean by that is like, Twitch comes with its own set of lingo, like poggers, kappa, uh, things like that, like the emotes. And the inside jokes within the culture of Twitch itself. Hang out in people's streams and meet people and learn about how the Twitch culture is because it is very specific. It's a lot different than on YouTube or on TikTok. It is its own beast with its own set of rules and expectations. And the best way to do it is to just jump in and start meeting people not only in your niche but also outside your niche when i started hanging out in other people's streams just to kind of see what they were doing maybe get inspiration um 
I became part of some communities that honestly changed my life. Uh, I feel as though I have grown as a person because I have a lot more global view of the world and it's opened my eyes for sure about how different other people are and how it's a good thing. And having that kind of mindset uh, and trying to network and make friends with people will only grow your Twitch stream because having a good group of friends that are also Twitch streamers, you can send your audience to each other with raids and things like that. And that is probably the best way to start to grow your channel is uh, just to be friends with other streamers. Now, number three would be to be intentional with other social medias. Okay. So, for this one, I mean that you need to have a plan in place for what you're trying to do with each social media. For instance, when I started this year, or last year, I just started posting all my VODs to my, to my YouTube channel. And literally, nothing happened to them. It tanked my analytics. My click-through rate was awful. The VODs were not getting any views. And so, that was me being unintentional with what I was trying to make on YouTube. Around the middle of the... Uh, middle of the year I'm like well let me just try some like high quality edited video that might pick up we'll see you know but the problem was is that it was taking up too much of my time and I am a father I'm a husband I only really do content creation for you know three three nights a week on Twitch and so I had to be smart and now I've decided that I'm going to make YouTube these sort of like mini streams, you know, and that's what works for me. But now that I'm being intentional with this YouTube thing, uh, I started to gain a lot more traction on it because I'm being consistent with the content that I'm making and, um, and it's growing because of that. Another thing is too, is like for a while I was just posting whatever onto TikTok, like whatever, because it's, it felt like to me that it's, it's kind of random what blows up. You know, and there is an element of that, of randomness and luck to TikTok. But um, now that I've kind of know exactly what I'm going to be posting to TikTok, I want it to be more a personal thing uh, and not necessarily just sending people to my Twitch stream, but also um, kind of being an extra place for my community to go to talk to me. That's like what the TikTok is for. I have a specific idea of what each social media is for. Like Discord is for like updates and things and funny memes and conversation on the on the everyday type thing. Uh, TikTok is like some more content that's like video related and it can be clips and it can be um, interesting things for my existing audience. Then YouTube is what we're doing right now. And then course um which is my baby so there you go that's like my personal content strategy and it took me a while to get to this content strategy because i didn't know what i was doing and so that's why i say be intentional because otherwise you're going to just be wasting your time uh the fourth thing that i learned is to do events now you don't have to be Ludwig and do your checks, bo checks, boss, chess boxing event or something crazy like that. It can be small things. Uh, and so what I did was I've over the past year, I've made it a thing where people will donate their channel points for like a community challenge. And then at the end, we will do a big event. For instance, some of the highlights of last year were reverse strip stream where, um, People will then donate more channel points and I'll put on more and more and more clothes until I can't like move. Um, I did a yoga stream where I bought yoga pants and did some funny made up yoga poses and things like that. Did a hot tub stream, which was very, very popular, uh, where I set up a little baby pool in my basement and we just hung out. 
Uh, and I tried some events that also failed too, like the uh, Cappy Cookout. I tried to do that. We did a cookout outside and it was laggy and bad. But you know what? I think it's important to try to do extra special things for the stream, you know? And that is what will... And I'm not saying like, you should steal my events. But what I am saying is that um, you should do something that highlights your personality or makes it very special for your viewers. You know, like there's crowd control streams where people can control stuff in your game. There's other things like that. Just make or, or charity streams. You know, people go bananas for those too, and it's for a good cause. So I would say doing events is like, really huge uh for growing your your brand and growing your twitch stream because it always gives people like callbacks too i still i have like it uh, hot tub emotes and hot tub uh channel redeems and things like that channel point redeems because it brings people back to that night and how fun it was so doing events will definitely um help you for sure so do that number five is to be flexible so they say to be consistent right all these twitch gurus will always tell you to be consistent as possible and i agree that is a great way to grow however if you have to do something like for your family or you have you take a night off because you're sick or whatever. Do it. Do it. Okay? Just take the time off. Is the only thing worse than putting out no content is putting out actively bad content. And that also goes for like what game you're playing. So be flexible in like what you're willing to play. For me, I have always thought that I was going to be a variety streamer because um I, that, that's what I could see myself doing for the longest term, you know? And so, um, I, I'm not just sticking to one game or whatever, and I know that's probably stunting my growth in the short term, but it's going to help me build the community that I want in the long term. So being flexible is probably one of the best things that you can do. And then, of course, finally, the sixth thing that I learned is to have friggin' fun. If you're not having fun, you need to stop and take a break. Because your viewers will, will see that. It's obvious to them. Like, so, another thing about having fun, too, is that I have stopped games um, in the middle of playing through them. So, like, generally, I'll try and beat a game on stream. But if I'm not really having fun streaming the game, then I'll just stop. Like, I was maybe one or two streams away from completing Breath of the Wild on stream. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of not having fun anymore. So I stopped, you know? And I never heard anything about, when are you going to finish Breath of the Wild? Because my audience knew that, hey, you know, it, for the best content, you have to have the best mindset. And if you're not having fun playing, the, if, if the game is turned into a job, and why are you doing it? You know, you, uh, obviously my goal is to go full time and to make it a job, but it's not to um, make it an unfun, boring job where I make content that I'm not happy about. And so, yeah, I stopped Breath of the Wild on stream. I really enjoy playing Outer Wilds. Stop playing that on stream because I want to finish that off stream. Like I can really think about it myself. Um. But then there's some things that uh, I, I have a blast doing all the time, like playing Fortnite, playing TFT, um, jumping into weird free-to-play Steam games. And those are what bring me joy, and so that's what the audience also really enjoys as well. Um, and so there you go. There's my six, uh, six things for, that I learned over the past year, Twitch streaming. Um, the biggest thing that I would say is to just freaking do it. Just do it. Twitch streaming is probably one of the funnest things 
that I've ever done. And I'm so glad that I started. And I would only recommend it because for me, it's given me confidence. It's given me so much stuff. And I hope that these little lessons uh, have been helpful for you and that they take you uh, even farther on your Twitch journey. And uh, hey, stick around. Maybe like and subscribe because I'll probably be doing a lot more streaming slash gaming related content similar to this on the channel. So see y'all later. You're loved and appreciated. Bye. Bye bye now. See you. Bye.